Pinewood Derby at Beth Hillel, uh, Pack 311. Feeling really good. Made Pine Derby card. It's January 26th. I also got my MDL results on Friday, and I need to tell you guys all about it. But I will tell you that I have mycoplasma pneumonia, which is walking pneumonia, which makes perfect sense. Well, I've had bronchitis five times. Look, I'm bleeding. With Hashimoto's thyroiditis, chronic active Epstein Barr, bipolar type 1, PTSD, alcoholism, and Lyme disease. <laughs> It's a big day. Today is our open house at Toastmasters and I'm speaking. Um, but now I'm going to the hospital to get a, it has a name, pulmonary something something, like function test, which I just think is so funny that my insurance would rather pay like, probably, I don't even know how much it's gonna be, maybe $4,000 for this 90 minute breathing test for me, rather than take some blood and test me for um, walking pneumonia. <laughs> I feel good today, by the way. I actually walked eight blocks to meditation yesterday and then meditated for 45 minutes with a group because I know that I do better in groups. And then I walked eight blocks back home. Oh, and I went grocery shopping and my groceries on my back in my backpack and I'm a little sore today but I feel good feel good feel good yay so I did a lot of heavy breathing and the pulmonary technician was like this amazing person from Lebanon so cool like great sense of humor and we just cracked up the whole time because, I mean, I was doing, I really wanted to video it, but I was doing some stuff that was, like, so dumb. And then I got a breathing treatment, and, like, smoke was coming out of it. It was hilarious, but, like, I had to have my pulse done on my finger, and it was, like, pretty intense. It's pretty intense. I think I passed. I think I did a good job. And uh, she said that with walking pneumonia, there is fluid in the lungs. So now I'm like, oh, maybe that's why they didn't test me for it, because I don't have fluid in my lungs. Anyway, who knows? I'm sure it's all from dumb Lyme infections, co-infections, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I think I'm on the wrong floor. Damn it. Okay, you guys, I realized there was one cool thing that I could show you. Look, it's my hospital wristband. <laughs> I can't believe I had to go to the hospital for that. Hello, rad humans. Look what happened. Dum -ba -dum -bum -bum -dum -bum -bum -bum. I had Toastmasters tonight. Da -da! I am ruling at Toastmasters. I feel really good. I worked really hard on this speech. It was about being a human rather than being a race or a gender and about focusing on love and the area director was there and the district guy was there and <clears throat> it was really cool. We had a lot of people there tonight. We had our open house. I wasn't too stressed, which was cool. After that breathing treatment, I thought, <laughs> I don't know. I just was like, albuterol, you know, kind of makes me go. But wow, I did so much today. I can't even imagine doing what I did today a month ago. Like there's no way and uh, to have the energy I mean I still have the locking pneumonia but I feel like it's getting better and to just have the energy to like do life and have such a big day where I you know I took my son to school I took a nap I worked I memorized my speech that I gave tonight and I, I literally just finished writing it yesterday which is normal for me. And I, 
I'm just really happy. I, you know, I, I did that whole breathing thing, which was crazy and like an hour and a half long. And I mean, Jesus, I was admitted to the hospital today. <laughs> that sounds so dramatic. And uh, then I just went home, threw on some makeup and went to Toastmasters with chips and dips and drinks and did the whole deal. And it's really cool. I love Toastmasters and I'm getting so I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer to being a professional public speaker and I'm just so happy that my health coach encouraged me to not give up on my dream when I was sick and I mean I'm still sick but I don't really feel that symptomatic I mean I do I'm definitely not at 100% but I would say I'm I would say I'm at like 70% and you know kicking Lyme's ass and then getting rid of these co-infections and uh, yeah it's good it's good life is good so and oh look I'm wearing makeup I mean seriously makeup it's crazy so it's January 28th still and uh, I am I think tomorrow is 15 weeks. I have to check my calendar and make sure. But that's pretty awesome. 15 weeks. 15 times 7 is, I don't know, 30, 60, 90, 7, 97? 97 days? No, that's not right. It has to be more than that. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling. Bye, guys! Oh, and I forgot to tell you that I'm at in and out and I... Uh, ate a Milky Way bar today. I relapsed on food. So, now my plan is to pig out and then restart my food. Uh, so I'm gonna party now. Bye. <laughs> it's January 31st, Friday. I am volunteering at my son's school for the first time since kindergarten. He's in second grade. I'm doing valet line. I don't know. I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. That was so fun and so easy. I always forget, like, volunteering is really good for the soul and it's, like, so easy. You just show up and people are, like, so grateful for you. Awesome. Okay, you guys, finally, my MDL labs as promised. Hey guys, um, I'm recording this at a later time because I listened back and uh, you know, I just wasn't clear on a lot of things and I have a lot more knowledge now. So we're gonna go over this now. And um, this was my original MDL. And what I've learned is cytomegalovirus is actually one of the things that was really messing up my lungs. I thought it was just the mycoplasma. The mycoplasma did not help for sure, but uh, this, the CMV uh, I'm, was positive for IgM and IgG, which IgM means it's a current infection. IgG is a little squirrely. Western Med will say it's a past infection. It was, it, it is not now. And, um, the more alternative med medicine will say IgG means it's a past infection or a chronic infection. So there's really no way to tell until that IgG is no longer positive. So as long as IgG is positive, we pay more attention to it in alternative medicine. And I noticed actually on my old labs that my Epstein-Barr was not IgM positive. It was only IgG positive when I was super duper sick with it. So that was interesting. And then we have just an IgG positive on HHV6, uh, which was interesting as well. The other interesting thing is for something to come up on MDL, it has to be, I don't know, MDL is a weird lab. It's not super radly accurate, but I did it because uh, it was 100%, well, not 100%, I had to pay like 150 bucks. It, it's covered out of my insurance and I haven't had a lot of cash flow during all of this and you know there's been a lot of outgoing money so anywhere I could save I did and because I already knew that I had Lyme I was like 
let's just do the IgM to see what co-infections I have. And I also knew that by doing the SRT for Lyme, the co-infections will go away. And uh, I believe that strongly. That's a controversial belief. Some people like to do separate SOTs for all the co-infections. And I they also think it depends on which co-infections you have. I know like Bartonella and Babesia can be really, really intense. And there are several that are really, really intense. But so far, so good as far as I'm concerned. And we'll go back to the Lyme on here because it's interesting. But the next thing I want to show you is the second page of the MDL. I covered a lot of information because I love you guys, but I don't want everything out there in the world. Um, here's the mycoplasma and you see it is, uh, it's just IgG, it's not IgM. Uh, but I believe probably with all of my chronic lung stuff that I've had throughout my life, it's probably more of a chronic situation. We'll go over those lines again in a bit. Oh, actually, let's go through the line now. So that's it for the co-infections that came up. But if you look, I just wanted to show you guys on a, uh, my very first Lyme test that I ever had was with my first integrative doctor and he was convinced I had Lyme. And this is a quest, um, <sighs> a quest, uh, what am I, I'm blanking, Western blot. Wow, seriously. Okay. And the only thing that came up reactive, it didn't tell me anything besides reactive was was the 41 KD band, IgG, not IgM. It did not, it came up non-reactive on IgM. Per the CDC criteria, Lyme disease IgG immunobot must show reactivity to at least five or 10 specific Borrelial, Borrelial proteins to be considered positive. And then for IgM, it needs to be two to three. In Europe, they only need one to think that you have Lyme. Uh, they're a little more progressive than we are. And the CDC, you know, there's a bill that currently the CDC is being, they have to reassess all of this because it's, it's just not really accurate. So uh, if we go here, so you can see this, so this is through MDL. Yet again, this is another Western blot. Yet again, I come up a negative, but what's interesting on here is that my IgG uh, came up band 41. See, band 41 is there again, but 93 slash 83 also came up, which is interesting. I just think it's interesting that they didn't, 93 came up non-reactive here, but this was, this was before the MDL and I'd already done SOT at this point. So the other thing that's interesting, I'll see the ELISA test on Lyme, I'm totally negative on MDL. Pink, don't have Lyme, right? So this is how I found out I had Lyme, guys. And this is really, 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 really important. Okay, so this is the Prime Spot lab. There's nothing on here that you can't see. It's a weird lab. It's out of England and the numbers are so weird. Okay, so the higher your number, the happier you are, which does not make sense because normally it's lower, right? So what we see here is I have a 30 for my Tech One, which is a Lyme DNA RNA, right? So that shows that I was right in between a low and an intermediate value. This is what told me that I had Lyme disease. And here's the deal. You'll get a million false negatives on Lyme, but you're not going to get a false positive. And so this was how I knew that I had Lyme disease three tests later, two tests later. And I really seriously didn't think that I had it. So I just think it's really interesting. I also, my HPV also came up. I'm hoping that it just goes away. It's the numbers are better now. Uh, I'm hoping that goes away. I'm hoping that because the Lyme was pretty crazy that that got kicked up and that I won't have to do a separate SOT for it. Please, God, no. Anyway, those are the labs, you guys. Those are the labs. Woohoo! Please hit the subscribe button. There. And Bell. And Bell. And the ring my bell. 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 Bell.